This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Committed to advancing health and economic opportunity for all Virginians. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond, a very special welcome to two Richmond area legislators, mm -hmm. uh, key leaders on the Martin Luther King Memorial Commission and leaders on many, many different issues, Senator Jennifer McClellan and Delegate Dolores McQuinn. And really interested in talking with you all about uh, the issues of the day as well as especially the work of the Martin Luther King Commission and what you're doing. I'll tell our viewers that we're having a conversation on July 29th. <laughs> They're seeing the show a couple of weeks later, yeah. but it'll, it'll be before your next King Commission meeting, yeah. I believe, later in, in August. Mm -hmm. And there's a tremendous amount of work going on on that commission. Some yes. of the viewers may not know that it's got to be one of the oldest continuously existing commissions mm -hmm. in Virginia going back to 1992. That's right. Yeah. Made permanent in the late 90s, mm -hmm. and here it is, 2019, with still unfinished work yeah. that, that you're doing. So start at any point you want to on what's happening with the King Commission, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, you're the chair. Yeah, so sure, yeah. <laughs> the, the chair. chair. The chair. Yeah. So uh, thanks, thanks, Dave, for having us. First of all, um, we were founded uh, to keep the focus on Dr. King's work, um, not just his life, and um, but we have become one of the default agencies, the lead agencies, to really focus on African American commemorations. Um, and then I think the work that Delegate McQuinn's commission uh, on the task force for the preservation of, uh, of African American history focuses more on pre preserving sites and how do you tell the story uh, through, through public history. Uh, so we complement each other very well. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a lot of projects going on right now. Um, we are finishing up our beloved community conversations and our King in Virginia project. We wanted to focus on Dr. King's life and legacy in Virginia um, by having conversations in each of the communities he visited to talk about where are we in achieving his vision of a beloved community. We are in the process of scheduling one for Dinwiddie and then we'll have one more at Virginia State University. Um, our second major project is the Monument to Emancipation mm -hmm. and Freedom which is how we decided to commemorate the sesquicentennial of not just the Emancipation Proclamation, but the process of emancipation. Um, we hope to have that finished uh, early next year. And then um, our newest project, but I think the most ambitious, is the Lynching in Virginia project, where we um, first, Virginia became the first state in the nation to acknowledge and profess, uh, express profound regret for the existence of racial terror lynchings. We are compiling information on all of the documented lynchings that occurred in Virginia, and make that available in one place, but then have programming across the Commonwealth in those communities where lynchings happen to first acknowledge it happened, mm -hmm. acknowledge this was a person who was murdered and the effect that that had on the community so that we can begin the process of healing. 
Dr. And, and I guess one of the greatest, and probably um, we, we talk about ambitious, is the um, lynching in Virginia, the compilation of that information. But I think that what I really take away with away from it is to that we have an opportunity um, to give honor to those who had been so brutally dishonored and um, put a name with the incident, um, uh, uh, give families some kind of relief, those who are still living uh, but have understood through oral history what had happened and how the communities were affected by it. And so I, I think that um, not only are we doing it in Virginia, but across this nation, yeah. other communities are looking at this as well. And um, I, again, it's ambitious, <laughs> but I think it's the right thing for the right time um, to begin to unearth this history again and make certain that um, you're just making people's lives relevant mm -hmm. uh, who were deemed irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I had, had the opportunity to be at your April meeting mm -hmm. and you had some expert testimony from someone, I believe, from uh, Montgomery, mm -hmm. yeah. Alabama, yeah. who was there, and it was really more than eye-opening yeah. to hear the discussion about even as out west, Washington State, and mm -hmm. that it was not simply in the old south mm -hmm. that this occurred. Mm -hmm. right. It was the brutality of those lynching um, and the terrorizing of communities. Um, you know, it is almost, um, I guess, as you look at the whole issue of enslaved Africans and their period here, um, but you realize that, um, I guess, the domestic terrorism mm -hmm. was occurring before yeah. recently, yeah. Um, before 9-11 and before, um, and um, entire communities um, was terrorized by these situations They were often community events mm -hmm. where everyone was invited to be a part of it. Um, and the cruelty of that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, um, just mind-bothering. You know, our, our viewers would have either parents uh, or grandparents who were alive, because mm -hmm. I think it goes uh, comes up into the 1930s, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if and there's beyond. any since the beyond. 1930s. Beyond. Yeah, beyond. No, beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so in 19, around, I believe, 1928, Virginia passed the anti-lynching law that actually made it a crime. Um, but we know they still occurred. Not, a, not yeah. a crime before then. No. 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 Um, we know that there were lynchings that still occurred. Um, I, I, I know nationwide, at least until the, into the 1940s. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know in until in the 1950s. Yes. And I think if we really dig a little deeper, um, even even later than that. So um, and and a lot of the lynchings, a lot of the the research has shown even some that were classified as suicides, mm -hmm. uh, yes. there, there's anecdotal evidence that they probably were lynchings. Mm -hmm. So um, it, is, it is a lot of work to uncover. Um, where We hear about things every day. We didn't know about the research we start with is um, research done out of, out of James Madison. Uh, but I got an email the other day from uh, someone in Alexandria who word of mouth heard about a lynching in, I believe, Withville, and has found someone who was a witness to it, who is who is willing to tell their story. So, um, some of it we found out through, you know, the the records, state records, county records, court records, some through media accounts, but some of it is just word of mouth from people who saw it, um, but it was never recorded. And, and, and David, I hope that what we are doing actually will empower those who are living to talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people, mm -hmm. many who are still living have to have had to live with this mm -hmm. uh, secret in many ways. Yeah. Um, it was not necessarily oral history that they passed on. Right. Uh, there was a shame, shaming to it. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that uh, by the work that we're doing, that they will also feel empowered. Mm -hmm to step up and begin to talk about this, uh, just for mental sanity, as yeah. well as just to uncover this history and, and honor again those that have been so dishonored. Yeah.
among our viewers, there may be those who have heard rumors of mm -hmm. or, or even have knowledge. You say you got an email. How, how okay. should people get in get in touch with you all mm -hmm. or other? There are ten of you legislators. They're on the commission. There are yeah. many other citizen members. Yeah. Too. Well, I think the best way is to go through our staff um, and and uh, Lily Jones and Migo Wade, mm -hmm. who are in legislative services, um, or they can contact us directly. The commission does have a website. If you just Google VA MLK Commission, we also have a Facebook page. So any one of those those okay. sources, you can you can reach us. And if they go on that on the website, I know because I used it recently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll find your staff's emails right yes. there. Yes, so they, they, they'll it'd be easy to find to contact mm -hmm. yes. uh, either or both of the staff members who can. Yes help you get, gather that information. The Library of Virginia is, is mm. working with you on the yes, project? Yes, it's a huge collaboration. Uh, Library of Virginia, um, we have a work group that includes uh, Dr. DeFazio from JMU who has a database that we are going to link to from our website of all of his, uh, the research he and his students have done. Um, we are starting to look at the archives of John Mitchell's papers mm. and P.B. Young uh, to uh, black newspaper publishers who were anti-lynching crusaders. Mm -hmm. And these were also national stories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ida B. Wells was a huge anti-lynching crusader who left Memphis because she was threatened. Um, and that's a really good example. This was not just something that impacted communities in the area where they were lynched, but there were whole families mm -hmm. who fled the South because of the violence around lynching. And that's a big part of the Great Migration that you don't hear about. Everyone assumes that the Great Migration was all about, you know, blacks leaving the South and going north looking for jobs. It was also leaving the South looking for safety. We could we could spend the entire time on that, but talk some about the Emancipation and Freedom mm -hmm. Project Monument. No. Yeah, so that's a st uh, <laughs> statue. Um, it's it's depicting a new, an imaginary newly free slave family with the mother evoking the imagery of the Statue of Liberty, but instead of a torch, she has a copy of the Emancipation mm -hmm. Proclamation, and uh, in her arm is a baby. Um, it and but we wanted to not just you know emancipation was not one moment in time. It was a process. So on one side, we are going to honor five African-American Virginians who fought against slavery, um, who have not been recognized really before. And then on the other side, five who fought for freedom and equality post-Civil War um, who have not been honored. And we are raising money for it. So <laughs> when you go to the commission website, on the website though, we are we are taking donations of every size. We've gotten, you know, $10 donations, we've gotten $10,000 donations. When they also when they go on the website, there's on one of the pages, there's a entire list of 11 different responsibilities <laughs> that the commission has and and it's and it's such significant. I mean to in the developing of programs, you've been mm -hmm. doing that monitoring educational goals yes. in both public and private schools mm -hmm. to encourage recognition. And, and then when you come to number four, I want to ask you about number four because it's, it talks about <laughs> facilitating the analysis of public policy relatively to Dr. King's principles and philosophy, mm -hmm. including his work pertaining to social and economic justice, yeah. ethics, and racial equality. Yeah. What a charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's why the reason our work is so important is not just to recognize history for history's sake, although you should. But there are policies in place today that are rooted in slavery, Jim Crow, that, mm -hmm. that if you're truly going to understand how those policies came to be, you need to understand the history of how we got there. Mm -hmm. This is clearly laid out in, the, in EJI, the Equal Justice Initiatives uh, Lynching in America report, where they make the connection that, that you can't truly address mass incarceration and criminal justice reform unless you understand the history of lynching. So a lot of our programs are not just educate about the history, but show how it's relevant today. So another project I forgot, you know, this is going to be, this October 8th is the sesquicentennial of when Virginia ratified the 14th and 15th mm -hmm. Amendments, mm -hmm. 
well, that's an important date. It's interesting that's the date Virginia did both. But we're still feeling the ramifications of the passage of the 14th Amendment today. So we're going to have programming where we talk about, you know, where are we in, in, in fulfilling the promises of those amendments and where do we need to go to do it? Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that the Commission has done is just an amazing job is in terms of when you talk about education. We know education brings about enlightenment and the enlightenment empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, I think, when you look at the number four yes. <laughs> that you have articulated, I think that right. uh, when it's all said and done, that is the, um, I would con consider that a, a major objective that people are educated about the history, educated about uh, the work of Dr. King, educated about what we're doing. Yeah. And, you know, and through enlightenment, they are empowered to get up and do some things themselves to also bring history forward um, and to even do some research within their own families. So I think that because so much have been buried, what we are doing would certainly help to empower communities across this Commonwealth and, uh, and make people very much aware of the contributing factors in making of Virginia. Yeah. And these are troublesome times. Oh. And it's, it's, I mean, if, and thinking about the years since Dr. King's mm -hmm. life and since his mm -hmm. untimely death and assassination in the now, I mean, if you were looking for progress, you perhaps can find some glimpses of it, but then there's, 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 as, as my Methodist friends would call it, there's some backsliding. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and yeah. there's some yeah. not, not really yeah. going forward. So I think it, it's really, puts an additional burden on mm -hmm. what, on mm -hmm. what you're, you and your colleagues are doing in the, the King Commission, and, and then what happens in the 2020 legislation and mm -hmm. what happens to really try to help mm -hmm. advance public policy yeah. that, that creates the kind of equality. Right. You're, we are, you're absolutely right, but I just think all of us, and particularly those who are in leadership that we must step up. And one of the statements that I've made when I was talking to someone, I said that, you know, I am, I am looking past in many, even though things are happening in, a mis in the present, but I'm looking past the present into the future. Um, Jen has uh, little kids yeah. and uh, I'm past that age, but I have grandchildren yeah. in close to the, the ages of Jen's kids. And my thing is that, you know, what I am determined that, um, I have to help to make a better America uh, and build a better America for the America that's been built. Yeah. And uh, it, is, it is only for the future, for future generations. We've got to do better. They deserve better. And so uh, as we you know, fight uh, for democracy and equality and equity and justice, um, we, we, we must understand that even in growing weary in it, that it is not as much about us as it is those who will follow us. Mm -hmm. Well, that certainly was the philosophy of Dr. King. Yes, yes, it, yes. It was. Yes, it yes. It clearly was. Mm -hmm. uh, now, number eight. <laughs> <laughs> number eight kind of builds on number four. Okay. Let me read that to our viewers. You mm -hmm. all know what it says. I'll read it to our viewers. It's to monitor and evaluate state, local, and national public policy relative to the principles of, of Dr. Dr. King, King and make appropriate recommendations to the governor and to the General Assembly to maintain progress towards social and economic justice and equal opportunity for all citizens. It may be out of some of that that, that the, the mm -hmm. year of reconciliation Asian work yes. that came, yes. but I think I have heard that there's some effort that may be underway to look at other sections of the code and see what mm -hmm. what needs to be uh, looked at that and, and be changed mm -hmm. that would that would help maintain some mm -hmm. progress towards social and, mm -hmm. and economic justice the, the only way that transformation will come about is for us to look at policy and begin to dismantle some of those things that have been barriers um, and I think that the work that we are doing with MLK with the reconciliation truth and reconciliation with other organizations that you're uh, connected with, 
um, is how do we look at the code? How do we look at the policy and begin to uh, bring about equity mm -hmm. in so many areas? I, I don't even know if it's so much equality now as it is equity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, that is what Dr. King fought for, and, um, and he was determined. And I think he has left us you know, a legacy to continue to do that. And, um, but it is the approach to take is to go after the policy, yeah. policies that have been put in place. And so many are still on the books that have no business being there. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember it's not just the King Commission that is doing that. I mean, the Legislative Black Caucus has mm -hmm. really taken the lead on that. <coughs> Um, the, the African American Advisory Council legislation that passed will, you know, create an executive branch level uh, group that's going to do the same thing. Um, and I think we all work very well together. But the Brown versus Board Scholarship uh, mm -hmm. is a very good example of something that, that came out of, of, um, of this work and, and number eight. Um, where we recognize that because of massive resistance, there were so many white and black uh, Virginians who never got an education. And to, to have a scholarship program uh, paid for by the state to help them get that education. Um, I think that's, that's one example of, of, of the work that we've done, but there are many, many, many more. You know, there was an op-ed or an article I saw recently pointing out that those scholarships were really a good example of the positive work of some kind of reparations mm -hmm. that, that were made. And sometimes people shy away from that mm -hmm. word, mm -hmm. worse, shy away from the concept and say, well, uh, we weren't the ones that caused the harm, <laughs> so why should we do that? But I think that, I think yeah. that that's an example yeah. of, of the, even the General Assembly coming yes. together on yes. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. just the King Commission, and, but you're all taking the lead and saying yeah. that needs to happen. And sometimes it's not money. I mean, sometimes it is, it is acknowledging the patterns that were put in place by legislation that have disproportionate impacts on communities of color and then changing it. So sometimes reparations is, is just a change right. of the law or it's, it's recognizing there, there are at-risk communities that the core of what led them down that road was racism mm -hmm. and and recognizing you know a lot of it is you know maybe we need to shift some of our resources to lift those communities up because the government played a significant role in in holding them down so uh, but it's not just money All right before our time's up just a couple more minutes okay. uh, now you're going I don't want you to end and walk out saying I thought David was going to talk to us about this or ask us about oh, that so yeah. what what else would you want to tell our, tell our viewers, uh, either about the King Commission or about other work that's going on? Well, I, I just, um, I guess my, to tell them that, you know, we, all of us have a responsibility here um, to make sure that, and particularly as we look at the American, um, the evolution, uh, the issue of democracy, all of us have an opportunity to step up and do our part that's going to be a positive projection on uh, uh, the, the state of Virginia, this nation, and our communities. And I would hope that as uh, this is fresh on everyone's mind about what's going on in Williamsburg or what's happening here in Richmond, that each of us realize that there's some responsibility within each of us and we need to step up and begin to objectively look at uh, the many dynamics that have created where, the situation where we are and what does it take for us to move beyond it. And um, often we are 10 steps forward and then 25 steps backwards, mm. but we could help move that needle. And I'm hoping that the viewers would understand their obligation to help get that done. Yes. I, I would just add, you were know, sort of and where you began, it's, it, it is challenging times, but I see extraordinary opportunities for us to, to come together and move forward. And, and, you know, Delegate McQuinn has been doing that her entire career in public <laughs> service, and, and the King Commission is doing that, and mm -hmm. I'm doing that, but there is a role for everybody. Mm -hmm. So go to the website, sign up for, for uh, updates, and keep an eye on what we're doing. 
and take a note when you go on that website and you'll see the, the date announced for an upcoming meeting. August 19th. <laughs> and there are two more of those beloved community discussions yes, that will be yes. taking place. Yes. So that will be there too. Yes. So thank, thank you both. For and thank you, David, yes. for all that you do to make certain that uh, communities are aware of all this going on. We appreciate you. Thank you all for being mm -hmm. our guests. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by The Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Health Care Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.